Okay, and we're back. Got a bit of a recording error right there. I'm not sure what happened. We stopped recording, but uh, we're, we're back where we were. And uh, snipers on field. And as I was saying, the, the attrition is the attrition the sniper is going to cause is going to hurt Pulse a bit, and it's going to hurt. Honestly, it's going to hurt Clone a lot. But he does have this neat little reinforcement ability that Infantry Doctrine gets, where you can replace lost bodies as long as the squad manages to stay alive. And so he gets a nice little manpower boost. I think he's got two of the uh, reinforcements off map abilities, along with the 200 manpower from medical training, doctor, and luck. So he's probably got about, I think, uh, 12. I mean, rifle bodies, I think, are about 30, 30 manpower each, 25 to 30 manpower each. So he's probably got about, uh, what, what that's gonna be like five rifle squads of man uh, unlocks. That being said, we have a push coming on this Fulch Meter Sniper from these two airborne squads along with these RRs. But these storms and these Grems combined are gonna deal with these pretty quickly, especially once the sniper turns around now to start shooting with these airborne. So he doesn't miss a shot due to the fact that airborne have a 25% chance, I think, at uh, dodging the uh, sniper shot. And even these uh, LMG Marines are gonna be in a lot of trouble against two MP44 storms. Even one MP44 storm give them a lot of trouble. Even he does have some bar backup, but the combination of these two storms and these two grams is more than enough to kill everything here. Um, he retreats the storms away though, so that's interesting. He's, he seems to be awfully timid uh, with these storms, so perhaps he's low. How much pop is Gary using right now? Uh, I don't see why he'd be timid. You know, he's at 27 out of 39 pop, so I can only assume that he's starting to run low in infantry, so that would explain why he's a bit timid with engaging those stormtroopers. Um, what's Rug at? Rug's at 12 out of 40. Oh, he's calling something on though, so uh, that's okay. As you can see, he's at 45 pop. Um, here's here's something to say about that though. When you've got this much pop and you and you played for so much field advantage early on, uh, even having good field advantage and having high population, if you don't use your population, it doesn't do you any good. It's it's just it's not a viable strategy to lose bodies to get field control and then not take advantage of the population that field control gives you. Uh, so being at 12 out of 46 pop, that's that's a major misplay. Being being honest, that's 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 a pretty big deal. I mean, maybe he he's re waiting to call in like you know 40 pop of falls, but at the same time, maybe it's not his fault. Maybe maybe we haven't really been paying attention, and Rugs actually been losing a lot as well. Maybe he's low as well. So Axis may have hit the wall here because it seems like both Gary and Rug are are pretty low in units, judging from the amount of population they're using. Rugs. I mean, uh, Gary's floating 11 pop, and 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 Rugs floating over 20 pop. So perhaps they're both running low. So allies might be able to push for a win here. Uh, where amazingly, despite that, uh, despite that uh, uh, mid-game uh, pushback, uh, Sherman coming here probably trying to take a shot at this false sniper, since false snipers tend to uh, be pretty good at avoiding jeep fire. But these packs turn quickly uh, to deal with it, and these airborne here as well are probably going to die to these stormtroopers coming out of both. Oh, and 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 a fire up uh, slowdown here. So these storm these stormtroopers really putting some work in, six six kills and nine kills. So they're doing plenty of work right now. Uh, got some falls here, trying to chase down these marines. These marines in green cover are probably going to be tough to take out, but they are moving away now. And these storms are running away from the engagement as well, seeing that Sherman come in. Uh, the Sherman might get a shot on them though, that could really hurt if Gary really is low on, uh, low on units. Oh, they do get around the corner? Yes, they get around the corner, uh, just in time. These packs are pretty hard. These packs are kind of close, close together, so you want to be careful here, because if there is a good concentrated push, both these packs could go down, and that Sherman could be a big uh, problem right now. He's pretty low on health, so he needs to repair, so allies do have a bit of, uh, I mean, Axes do have a bit of time to uh, check out what they want to do. There's an off-map officer, officer here, so they definitely want to watch it for off-maps right now. Uh, these uh, engineers coming again, trying to kill the mortar, I guess. Should die in short order to the combination of uh, the sniper and uh, incoming fire. Uh, that being said, it would appear that the sniper is shooting the off-map officer, so that's interesting. And the Sherman goes down to a lucky pack shot, it looks like. He's had an angle with these bushes somehow. This off officer sort of looks like he's going to go down as well, so uh, that that could be painful. Or no, apparently it was just there for scouting. So okay, clone. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't. Maybe the allies aren't able to aren't able to tell just how many support things are here, but it seems like axes are pretty on their last legs because they're still floating a lot of pop, 24 to 46. And uh, Gary as well hasn't called anything new on. He Gary's not at 17 pop, so he seems to be running just on these stormtroopers and grenadiers. Uh, 
he does seem to be calling something on, actually. A uh, bit of a bug reinforcement tremor, but uh, maybe Gary's not entirely out, but he, if he's not out, he's definitely slow, because that's a lot of pop to be floating from both the Axis players. That's a lot of pop being floated. Uh, so, it, 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 and uh, now clones brought in 2T17, so these could actually become really painful to the Axis if they are low in infantry. Uh, because uh, if these T-17s don't get dealt with, they can slowly uh, hit and run against the Axis infantry, taking bodies out every time they come by. And honestly, uh, Volst hasn't lost a lot this game, especially after that start he had, and with the combination of reinforcements, like, he's great in the attrition game, so if they can get their forces together, use up their pop, because they're kind of floating a bit of pop as well. Uh, 30, uh, 23 out of 36, and clone. Uh, also at 23 out of 36, so uh, true teammates, that synergy is working together, even using perfectly even pop. <laughs> no, and we see Volst calling something on with the uh, 8 seconds of time. And it seems even Gary called something on. Uh, a Volt Render squad, so again, yeah, it does seem like Gary's definitely low. He's dating these storms as best he can. They're, they've done a lot of work, but 7 and 11 kills, but uh, these T-17s are coming in. Ooh, Mortar squad. Luckily, for there's no crit there to wipe the squad out, but um, that was a close call there. But Gary is definitely uh, low. Uh, Rug seems to be calling in more stuff actually, so Rug isn't quite as close to wipe that as we were led to believe by his low pop usage. But it does still seem he's being pretty careful with his, pop, uh, with his uh, unit usage because he still has he's still floating well over 10 pop. So I think I think both ax players are a bit low, but the sniper can definitely will down Volskinator here. Uh, and if not Volskinator, uh, definitely uh, Clone Troopers, because Clone Troopers is using a lot of high manpower, high munition uh, units uh, in this company. So Clone's probably more prone to getting a trigger out by the Sniper than uh, Volskinator is. The Sniper uh, decided to take a dally through that flame nade there, although it doesn't take too much damage. Uh, and he's already up to 15 kills, so he's on the verge of becoming a very big problem for the Allies. And once again, uh, Axis tried to retrieve this mortar. And we see some Airborne coming in from Clone, it looks like. So this game is getting really interesting, and oh, allies are finally on negative pop, so they do need to uh, concern themselves uh, here. I mean, here's the thing, they're on negative pop, but if, if the Axis really are as low as we, we think they are right now, and they do appear to be low, uh, the allies being at 35 pop isn't actually that big a deal, because their max pop seems to be what the Axis seems to be able to muster right now. So until the allies get down to about 30 pop, uh, Axis really haven't gained any advantage from that field control they had in the, in the uh, early mid game. And these T-17s wiping out this squad here. Two Pioneers on for Gary as well, so yeah, Gary definitely seems to be running low. So it looks like it's going to be up to Rug, but Rug, looking at his pop usage again, still at 33 out of 46, he seems to be low as well. So I think uh, I think the Axis are trying to play a mind game with the Allies, keep their stuff all together and make the Allies think they still have more than they actually do, because the Allies seem to be really scared of pushing up any, any, any small amount uh, right now. Uh, to try and take out the sniper, which is up to 19 kills now, so it's definitely becoming a problem for the allies. So, and, and Axis, I mean, maybe if they could start capping a bit more here with one of these false Mega squads to be helped. There's a cheap rush coming from the side, so this false Mega sniper needs to be careful from this cheap rush. And, oh my days! Okay, turns out you don't need jeeps, you don't need infantry rushes, you just need ATGs to kill false Mega snipers. I would really like to see the stats on the likelihood of an ATG killing a false Mega sniper. That is pretty amazing, but now we see the allies pushing in, that sniper's gone down, a pack's gone down to a mine it looks like, and the other pack's off to the side, so this T-17's going to have a little bit of fun quickly uh, before this pack turns around. And if the allies actually push in with all the infantry here, they could really push Axis off field, but the question is whether they know that or not, because Axis are seemingly quite low. Look, Gary's quite on some uh, bulk strength here, so maybe Gary's just down to bulks, he's still floating a lot of pop, but yeah. Uh, what's Rug's situation? And Rug, yeah, he's at 24 to 46, and he's not calling anything on yet, so this might be the the, the, the last gasp for Axis if they can't hold off this offensive. They might be up the game right here, but they've got, they seem to have been up to concentrate some firepower. Uh, this Marine Squad's going to, uh, being made to, you know, uh, daddle off. And this, uh, this Spar Squad can't stay in this house for too long, otherwise they're gonna die down to three men already. Uh, the T-17 does find this uh, false maker here, so they're prob the allies are probably going to get a finish capping off this sector with this airborne squad here. Uh, that does seem like a waste of an RR though, uh, although that being said, Axis don't seem to have a lot of vehicles on field. There's a bolt rush coming in the center, so yeah, uh, Axis seems to definitely be trying to make the allies think they have a lot more left than they actually do with these uh, little these uh, group pushes they're doing, which is, which is probably good. Uh, trying to pick up this ATG, I would assume, yeah, which is a good plan because they, they did lose a pack uh, during that last rush. 
Uh, ooh, an officer buff coming in on these marines, so they probably do want to, these volks at least very much want to back up, because while this officer buff is up, you probably don't want to be messing around with LMGs. Um, as they quickly start racking up kills on these volks when it is. Okay, I'm picking up 13, 3 kills right there. Uh, but there seems to be a counterbush coming up from the uh, Axis. Uh, and I don't know if they saw the uh, triage that, uh, at that point. If they did, they should definitely, if they have a mortar on field, I think they might actually. They should definitely start, yeah, they do have a mortar, so they should definitely start mortaring this triage because they, uh, at the very least, I'm pretty sure Rudd knows about what the uh, reinforcements building can do. A very nice nade there. Oh, and uh, Assault Nades had a cloak and instantly retreated from Volsk. So that was a really nice play there by Axis. Forcing off a lot of infantry on field. When you force infantry off, they can't use the reinforcements abilities, right? And more importantly, you force, force that vet off field, right? Because the most important thing about reinforcements is that it can keep vet, uh, vetted squads on the field for far longer, right? So you have strong squads staying on the field for long periods. But now they see this triage, so number one priority from the Axis right now should be to take this triage out, triage out at all costs, and they put too fast onto it, and it looks like the mortar is barraging now. Uh, this officer squad, uh, while not the best uh, uh, squad for offensive capabilities, I'm pretty sure the Axis squad is far better with their two G43s. This squad does have one Thompson and two Grand, so they can put in some work if they find an unsupported squad. So we should be careful, we should watch it off, so see if it gets anything, because there's a lot of vanilla Falsh makers running around, which they probably can beat a vanilla Falsh maker squad in a 1v1 situation. These storms are slowly uh, becoming a real nuisance with 9 and 13 kills, and oh, we see an off map officer from the Axis as well, so let's see if he's got an off map as well. He's brought in two at the same time, so either he's doing the same thing Clone did, just trying to bring him on for scouting, which probably won't stay for long, they're probably going to get a slight sight nerf in the next patch, or he's actually got some, if he does have an off map right now, he could really put the pain on this uh, allied rush. We have two vanilla ranger squads with an officer rushing up here. Uh, I'd assume they have some nades or something to take out this MG, which they do indeed. Is it a frangible or it's just an own pineapple? But this is a big push, and uh, Axis doesn't seem to have anything to support this. Uh, Gary's down to 15, uh, and, and Rug's down to 10 pop, and they they don't seem to be calling anything on to, in response to this push here. These are, just, these, are, just, <laughs> these are just vanilla ranger squads with grenades pushing here, and they're, they're, doing, they're absolutely wiping the Axis off field. They have an officer buff, but still. Uh, the fact that uh, the Axis don't have anything to counter that, that's pretty amazing. I mean, they must be really low. You see that nice use of sprint here to make the uh, Storms with normal speed and cloak. And we have Rug pulling on two Falschmaker squads. These probably could have been on field at least five minutes ago, because he had the pop to call them on, that's for sure. And they eat another pineapple to come down, and this Thompson's going to come in and probably put some real hurt in these uh, Falschmakers. And yeah, it's, 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 look, that Thompson's running through these Falschmakers pretty easily. These Storms come here, and they're going to wipe these, uh, 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 ranges that pretty easily since they ignore elite armor, but there's absolutely nothing they can do about this T17 unless he's uh, has some Faust on them. And this this squad is down to one man, uh, 13 kills on each of them though, so they've definitely bought their cost back, that's for sure. But uh, if the allies don't have any AT to do with these two T17s, they're 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 in a lot of trouble. And looking at uh, Rug here with just 10 pop on field, and looking at Gary with just 8 pop, which is probably just these two stormtroopers. Uh, it looks like Axis might be out of it, unless they can really pull the hat, uh, the rabbit out of the hat and kill these two T-17s, they're, they're, they're out of luck. Uh, the triage did go down though, so Volsk isn't going to be reinforcing anytime soon, but, uh, okay, we, we saw, okay, this might be a bit of a misplacement for, uh, clone troopers here, as he takes one Faust, three Fausts, but it doesn't die, so these, these two pioneers are probably going to die pretty quickly to this, uh, T-17. And, um, I still don't see Axis calling on anything. Uh, to deal with this, uh, Gary's just called on two bikes, so he's definitely out because there's no reason to bring those bikes on right now. Uh, Rug, are those airborne rugs? It, they do appear to be actually. So Rug actually seems to have a lot left in this company. So I'm really left wondering why he he did not call stuff on when he had the pop earlier. Uh, if these Falschmakers are on when those when those Rangers made the push there, they that that push would have been fought off pretty easily. And uh, what pop are allies are down to 28 pop, so it's really imperative to keep this field control at this point. Because if Gary is clearly out, I don't apparently, apparently every prediction we make about uh, Rug being out of stuff is incorrect because he keeps calling falls down. He's just floating a lot of pop while he's doing it. We have another triage coming up from Volsk, so he probably had a so apparently had a back triage to uh, keep using the reinforcements. Not that he has a whole lot left. That's probably only about five rifle models with 244 manpower, but still every model counts in this situation, right? But the allies are down to 28 pop, and they're losing one pop per minute. Uh, so, and I think around 20 pop the call-in time to start. So I think 
Axis just need to hold. If Axis can hold this ground for the next eight minutes, they will win this game. The question is, do they have enough to keep to keep uh keep this ground for eight minutes? That's the question. Uh, Rug, uh, doesn't okay. Rug does finally seem to be out. He's just sitting here with these falsion measures here, and he's not calling anything else on once again. So I think Rug is finally out. Uh, Gary as well. Again, he's down to these two storms, and uh, they're losing the section. In case, okay, for those that don't know, a unit that is cloaked cannot cap territory, and everything they have in this section of ground here is cloaked. So these falls are not capping or holding this territory, and this storm is not holding this territory. So they're cutting their wind timer, so they've gone from minus one a turn to point five a turn. So their victory time has gone from eight minutes of holding ground to 16 minutes of holding ground, and that's a lot harder uh, to achieve. Well, not 16 minutes, uh, 14 minutes, but they need to hold this ground here since they've lost the sector for 14 minutes. And either 14 is a whole lot, of hard, a whole lot harder than 7. Like, it's, it's, it's really hard to hold that ground. Um, maybe these vaults went up and took this sector to uh, counteract that, but the allies are here, so it's not going to matter too much, so... Um, they need to do something to force the allies back, because if the allies start capping now, uh, I don't see how they're going to win this, because this game is basically... Uh, 2v1 with uh, how little uh, Gary has, and even Rug's pretty. Actually, no, Rug just Rug just called on two martyrs. Where were these martyrs when the T17s were running around? This is this is really surprising. Rug's a pretty solid player. I'm really surprised for, of of him having uh, such poor pop usage because these two martyrs could have been so useful when those two T17s were running around here and killing his Falsham I don't I don't know why these came out so late. Um, even so, uh, so, I mean, maybe Rug isn't actually out. I mean, if Rug has enough stuff, if they can put a concentrated push in the center here, kill this second triage, uh, then they're probably still in the game, because he's got more than enough falls here to make a decent push, especially if these stormtroopers come in behind and, you know, kill off, you know, uh, some uh, some units around the triage. And the Martyrs can take care of the T-17, especially if the storms take care of this, uh, this ATG here, the Martyrs can definitely kill this T-17 now, especially with Faust uh, sitting here. Um... Oh boy, these these Falsh are running this MG and Soldier Armor, they can get suppressed awfully fast with that Soldier Armor and oh the entire oh that that's painful here. That's definitely this 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 Marine's gonna start really putting the pain into these Falsh right here. Uh so this is this is problematic now. Falsh nade uh proving how useful it is right there. <laughs> uh and, and this Thompson's gonna come in here with these so, oh boy, I mean, unless the Axis can call something on, which, which they may do, because Rug seems to be keep calling things on, uh, despite us thinking he's out of stuff, but I think he might actually finally be out of stuff, as, as he does, his, he's, he's keeping uh, far away with these uh, balls, and we see the pop bonus is plus two per turn, so the allies are quickly gaining back pop. They were at 26, and since 26 is where they will stop losing pop. And not that it mattered too much, because even though they can only bring on 26 pop of stuff, the a Axis only have seven pop, and 19 pop of stuff on the field, so uh, that, that's that's a real shame. I, I really like seeing territory grab kind of strategies, but uh, the Axis just didn't execute well enough this game, I guess. Uh, and uh, even through the smoke, uh, these falls being pushed off right here. And it looks like Rug is basically out with these two martyrs, all he has left. And uh, those two storms coming in, throwing a nade, getting, decreeing this uh, ATG, but these RRs through smoke are gonna really hurt these, take these martyrs up awfully quick. So it does look like this game has finally ended right here. It was a really close game to be honest, but it looks like a pretty poor start by Gary combined with uh, combined with somewhat poor pop usage from the Axis allowed allies to have the time to pull this game back uh, just through attrition looks like. Uh, and, and it looks like the Axis went for a high capping strategy, but they, they, they didn't take advantage of it because they did cap a lot of ground. And they gained a lot of pop advantage of the allies, but they didn't utilize it. They're floating, each player is floating 10 plus pop in multiple occasions, even floating 20 pop in a couple of points uh, when they had that pop advantage. So, you know, what's if you're going to do a capping strategy to uh, have a pop advantage of your opponent, if you don't use that population advantage, uh, there's absolutely no reason to do the strategy. And that seems to be the pitfall that uh, the Axis ran to here as they get wiped off the field right here, it looks like. And so, uh, great game from the Allies, to be honest. They got pushed back all the way here. They were down to 26 pop, but uh, through some good micros, some good call-ins, some good, a couple, a lot of bad pushes, but a couple of really good pushes, they were able to break the uh, Axis stranglehold in the midfield, and, and they won this game just through pure attrition. 
which is pretty rare for an allied company uh, to win through attrition versus capping. But they've done this game, and and uh, it's pretty fun to watch, I'm not going to lie. We got to see a couple of good doctrine abilities, such as reinforcements, the M20, the T17s. We got to see sprinting uh, stormtroopers. Uh, we got this is a really fun game to watch, to be honest. And and starting the game, I would have thought the Axis were going to win this easily. And about 20 minutes in, in minutes in, Axis did look like they were dominant. This game it was only a matter of time, but it, it looks like uh, Dallas pulled it off. This is this is really fun to watch. And uh, we're and and a good lesson to be learned here, right? You know, for the allies, you know, don't worry about being pushed back. You know, uh, just if you can organize your pushes together and utilize your pop in good areas of the field, you can you can beat Axis even with support weapons. And for the Axis players, another lesson they taught us here: if you have a pop advantage, it's not an advantage unless you're using that pop actively, which the Axis were not. That you, Gary was not able to use his pop because he was basically getting out of attrition and, and getting all the stuff killed. So that's one thing. But Rug, Rug seemed to be floating a lot of pop just because uh, he forgot he called units on it looked like. So even though the Axis didn't have great field control, they it meant nothing because they didn't have the units on field to take advantage of that pop advantage. Anyways, this is a really good game, I thought. It was back and forth. Uh, ally, a bit of a comeback for the Allies, I would say. And, and it was really fun to watch. I have to say, and I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see more games like this posted on the uh, forums because I. I think. I think two v twos are probably the the most interesting tactically uh, speaking EIR games you can watch. Three v twos are fun because you get to see lots of spam and lots of crazy strategies, right? But two v twos you get to see good solid micro and, and team play, and and I, I do like watching two v twos, and this is this is a good example of that. And um, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did. Uh, until next time, I guess.